This video is supported by PCB GoGo. Hi guys! My Xmoto project seems to have been well received by you. I was very happy about that. Now it goes on. Today we want to build a test system to develop the software or let's say, better the firmware for the Xmoto. I had chosen a microprocessor from the company STM because we had to be able to process a lot of signals via interrupts. I chose the STM32L432K processor because there was also a development board available. So, like an Arduino, a board with which you can test circuits before. The 256KB flash and 64KB RAM, as well as 80MHz clock, should be sufficient for our needs. Efficiency is the magic word here. I didn't want to install an additional crystal, because our area is very limited. As a platform for the hall sensors, I bought the ready-made board from Pololu. This comes with a magnetic disc and can be easily soldered onto the motor. Let's take a look at my test system. The first thing you will notice is the motor. There is a shaft screwed onto it, as well as an Allen key. In this case, a motor with a gear ratio of 298 to 1 and 6 volt. And at its end, you can see the board of the encoder. Then we have the Nucleo board L432KC, matching our chip on the Xmoto PCB. At the end, we're still missing a motor driver. My choice was the DRV8838 board from Pololu. At the end, there is an Arduino Nano with GRBL as software to send the step as well as direction signals to the motor. The motor is supplied with 5 volts for the encoders as well as extra power for the motor. In addition, the signals from the hall sensors are fed to the STM so it can count the signals and determine the absolute position of the motor. The motor driver receives PWM and direction signals from the STM to control the speed and direction of the motor. The whole thing is a closed loop system, which means that the position of the motor's drive shaft is constantly monitored by the hall sensors. If an error occurs, it is detected and actively controlled by the STM. So, if we try to change the position manually, the processor notices this and regulates against it to be able to hold its position. Here I can show you that by trying to change the position manually. The motor holds against it. Let me introduce a PCB manufacturer to you. PCB GoGo, our sponsor for this video. PCB GoGo is a quick turn PCB prototype manufacturer from China with over 10 years in the PCB industry. They offer FR4 board, Rogers, Copper, Flex and Rigid Flex for PCB prototype and assembly service. Their services are reliable and affordable, certified by UL, ROHS and REACH. Now everyone can enjoy free PCB prototyping on PCB GoGo and can get $34.99 for your PCB assembly order. If you're an electronic hobbyist or a student, this offer might be suitable for you. It's now totally free for 1 to 2 layers FR4 PCB within 100 plus 100 millimeters. Click the first link in the description and upload your Gerber file. Now we come to the firmware. I use a normal Arduino IDE and the add on package STM32 Duino. Now you can program the STM as if it was an Arduino. I found an 8 year old code on GitHub that I adapted to my needs. The good thing about it, it only works with standard instructions without changing any hardware specific registers. I then just installed the PID Volume 2 module and the first tests could be run. In the source code, we first define the connections, then we define the three values for the PID controller. 
This controller controls the motor so that the position is always reached or held. It would go too far to explain all this here, but I have a very nice video for you which you should definitely watch. In the setup routine, two interrupts are defined. One watches the step pin coming from the motion controller and counts up or down the internal counter of the desired position depending on the direction. The second one watches the hall sensors and counts the actual position of the magnetic disc up and down. In the loop it is now only looked at whether there is an error and this is then controlled via PID. Set point is the desired position and input the actual position. Output is the calculated PWM value which is sent to the motor driver, i.e. the motor. In GRBL we also have to define the data for signals for 1mm because we have here a 298 to 1 motor and 6 signals per revolution of the magnetic disk. We come to 298 times 6 equals 1788. We have to enter this value at the x-axis. Now we can define the feed rate in millimeters per minute and let the motor rotate once around 360 degrees with G1, X1. Now we test the setup and want to see how high the repeatability is. I'm also interested in the maximum load on the lever. First I connect a dial gorge and move the arm back and forth. We can then read the accuracy on the dial gorge. This test shows that we are quite accurate, there is hardly any deviation. Now let's look at the holding force of the motor. According to Pololu, this motor can hold 4 kilograms on 1 centimeter at 1.5 ampere. Unfortunately, my test setup is not suitable for such high currents. I have here a lever of 5 centimeters, and with the balance test, I come on approximately 300 grams. So, 5 times 0.3 results in 1.5 kilograms on the centimeter at 500 milliampere. I think these are impressive data. Maybe someone can help me and calculate the force down to 1 centimeter with the data. Please write down the solution in the comments. Thank you. Many users have also mentioned the backlash, that is, a range in which the axis can move freely. I guess it moves 1 to 2 degrees in the example motor and can be calculated later using motion control software. That should be it for now. In the next part, we will deal with the PCBs and how they are planned and manufactured. I still have some improvements in mind and want to have the PCBs sent to me completely assembled. You will also learn how to program the STM on the finished PCB. Kind regards, your Frank.